First question came from my boy Ricky B. He said, what's up, Engraven? I was listening to a podcast a couple days ago, and they brought something to my attention. With that record-breaking deals of today's QBs, the teams aren't able to keep high-profile receivers. For example, Adams leaving Green Bay because of the 50 mil contract for Aaron Rodgers. Tyreek Hill leaving due to Mahomes' deal. Lamar deserves every bit of 45 pl mil plus a year. Uh, should we be coming concerned about us not being able to pay top receivers to play with Lamar? Or do you think it won't matter because maybe we could have success, success with drafting wide receivers uh, in the near future? I think having Keith Williams and T. Martin are still huge impacts uh, with having experience knowing what an NFL-ready wide receiver looks like and hopefully are helping in the draft room with scouting wide receivers. Thank you for taking the time to read my question. And much love, my, my friend. Appreciate you, man. Um... With Patrick Mahomes, he's been on his deal for a couple of years now, and they had Tyreek Hill. And Tyreek Hill got paid. And Travis Kelsey, got, he got paid too. And Chris Jones, he got paid too. Um, so I don't even think it's the fact that you, you can't keep your receiver. Um, I think with KC, I think, they, I think stuff just fell apart there, man, straight up. Derek Carr just got paid, and they, and they paid Devontae Adams. I think it, before Tyreek Hill, I don't think Tyreek Hill surpassed him, but I'm not sure. But either way, uh, Devontae Adams, he got that. He became the, the highest paid wide receiver, I think, ever. Uh, then they paid Derek Carr after that, too. So, um, and then, yeah, with, with Tyreek Hill, yeah, now he's in Miami and he got two or so. Uh, we'll see how that go. I, I, I'm, like, really excited to see how that plays out, man. Um, but, yeah, as far as the Ravens. It just depends on what they want to do and how they want to do it. Are they going to continue to invest heavy, heavily into the defense? Uh, and on offense, they, they penny pinch? We'll see. As far as at receiver, are they going to penny pinch? Because they'll pay a lineman. They, they paid Mark Andrews, obviously. The Mark will get paid. But are they going to penny pinch at receiver? Um, that's just to be determined, really. Next question came from my guy Earl. He said, going with the theory that a player can't be tagged after an extension, what are your thoughts on Lamar signing a one-year extension for 75 mil guaranteed? <laughs> oh, so that would be 75 mil in one year. Guaranteed? No, not happening. Ravens would never do that. Um, it'd be nice for Lamar, though, but Ray Ravens would never. Anyway, he said, I know Ravens Nation would think that's a lot of money, but it essentially would be a two-year deal for 98 mil guaranteed since an extension would include this season's salary as well. Are you saying 70? No, you're saying 75 mil plus the 23 mil this year. Yeah, there, there's no way they would do that. Um, so two-year 98 mil, um, is that, oh, that's 49 mil per year? Um, if you average the two out, um, is, is my math right? Yeah, 49 mil per year. Yeah, I don't think they would do that. Um, Lamar still gets to renegotiate a deal in the offseason, but the fans wouldn't have to worry about our quarterback potentially being tagged two years in a row. Keep up the content and much success to you and your fam. I appreciate that, Earl. Um, yeah, I, I don't think they would do that. Um, because the franchise tag is cheaper. It's cheaper than, um, that. Because the franchise tag, um... It's yeah, it's definitely not forty nine mil a year. But it's like I think it's either I think it's in like the, the low forties, maybe high thirty I, I gotta I gotta check with this whole franchise tag thing, man. Cause with the franchise tag, um I I I, I don't know what the, the status of it is and exactly what it's gonna be. Cause it, it's like it, it's weird, but no, I, I don't see the Ravens doing that at all. Next questions came from Nova. He said, hey, I got two questions. Hope all is well with you and the fam as well as the rest of the team. Keep it clean. So as you may know, the Ravens like to pick up players from certain teams, mainly the Saints and Seahawks. A few names come to mind like Marcus Williams, Mark Ingram, Willie C., Latavius Murray, Earl Thomas, Alex Collins, and attempted for Bobby Wagner. There was also a, a lineman that the Seahawks drafted in the uh, first round a while back. That the Ravens has signed. I forget it. They signed him last year. I forget his name, though. Anyway, um, he said, and as you know, DK has been in the media and been a hot name for those kind of signings that aren't Ravens style. However, I do recall EDC saying they aren't done. And I had a hunch, but wanted to know what you thought. Could you see the Ravens making a trade for Michael Thomas? Mm. Michael Thomas. Wow. Um, underneath guy. Uh, I know people. a lot of people call him the Slant King. Um... Looking to be healthy this season. 
Uh, Ravens, of course, got ties to the Saints. Um, mm. That would be a sneaky one. That would be a sneaky one. Um, but a lot of people have been talking about that a lot last year. Uh, and a little bit this offseason, too. I just don't see the Ravens doing it. Now, Saints, they will get to unload his contract. So, Ravens will be taking on somebody in the middle of a contract. I just don't see them doing it. I don't. I wouldn't be mad if they did, but I, I don't see the Ravens doing it. It's just, it's not them. It's not them. And, um, yeah, it's just not something that they do. That's why I said, even with DK, I would love for them to do it. I just don't see them doing it. Oh, I would think he would fit in here lovely, but I just I don't don't see them doing it, unfortunately. He said uh, he restructured his contract, so for a one-year rental, he'd be cheap. And as long as he's back to health, he would be an immediate asset for our passing game. After this year, the numbers get, <laughs> the numbers get ugly, but if he has a productive year, uh, you would think that the Ravens would add years to stretch out the remaining 30 mil. Is it 30 mil per year? No, it can't be no 30 mil per year. No, receivers aren't getting paid that yet when he got his deal. So is it only 30 mil left on his deal? Uh, yeah, you could stretch that to like two years, 15. Anyway, he said it's also obvious the Saints are rebuilding with Peyton leaving the game, and we have the picks in the Saint that the Saints will cover. It's a dream slash stretch, but if the Ravens want to add to Lamar's success, this is a low-key way to do so. I'd love to know your thoughts as well as a package you think would work. Yeah, I, 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 I would not mind Michael Thomas at all, but... I just, it depends on if the Saints are really trying to get rid of him. Um, but if the Ravens were to trade for him, I think they could get him for like a second and a fourth and a fifth. Because, reason I don't say a first, because you're taking on a contract. Saints would be getting rid of the contract, you'd be taking it on. Um, so I don't think a first would be necessary. Um, but they would want multiple picks for that guy. So I think that would do it. Uh, and number two, he said, if you could get in G. Rose's head as a play caller, what would you add as an emphasis for our offense? After watching your vids, I think I know your answer. Screens. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, and I think an another thing would be uh, getting rid of a lot of Lamar's design runs. Um, but you said, what would, we, what would I add as an emphasis? Okay, as an emphasis, yeah. I would say emphasize uh, using Lamar's legs less. Let Lamar choose when to do that more. Um, but you you shouldn't. I don't think he should be the person that chooses that. I don't think Giro should be the person that chooses that. But, yes, yeah, screens for sure. Um, right, let, let's finish reading, though. He said, while I agree screens would make magic happen for our offense, I want to see more quick slants. With Mandrews, uh, Hollywood, and Bateman, each could flourish with this addition. Yeah, adding to the quick game would be a great addition, too. It would make everybody's job easier, get the ball in their hands earlier, um, allow them to get just more relaxed earlier in the game. Uh, instead of guys going on dry spells throughout the game to where they ain't even touching the ball, um, and it's, it, it would just help get them hot a lot earlier. He said, Mandrews has the body to punish the defender as long as, long as he catches it. Hollywood would turn that six-yard pass into a yak play, and Bateman would turn that into a first down. Um, in addition, you would get more yards than the run play we do on second and seven, <laughs> usually. Lastly, we've seen this time and time again used by QB greats like Breeze, Manning, Brady, and especially Ben to beat the Blitz, Ooh, man. which, as we know, is the newest method to beat Lamar Jackson. Adding this would give the offense another way to beat the Blitzes that we're going to see all year. Let me know what you're thinking. Thanks for all the great content and consistent content you create. I appreciate that. I agree. I, I agree 1,000%. Um, this would be a great way to just open up Ravens' offense. It would be such a great way to just make the offense better. And it's the thing is, see... You said that I would say screens, and I do agree with that. You said slants, and I do agree with that as well. But you know what's so crazy is that you ask somebody, what would they do to make this Ravens offense so much better? What would they do to make this Ravens offense so much powerful? It's always simple things. It's always simple things that we think of. It's, it's always just simple fixes, but these simple fixes would be so effective. Ravens got to stop overthinking. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like got to made it. How to made it. Boy, he's a fan and he like the Ravens. Like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. You too, team, keep it clean. You see my boy, he like got to made it. How to made it. Boy, that's my homie, ain't that right engraving. Right engraving.
Theme Keep It Clean Welcome to another episode of Question from Subs Where you can ask any NFL question you want to And we answer it in a video just like this For the patrons, the Team Keep It Clean patrons If you want to send a question, you can send it directly on Patreon If you would like to become a Team Keep It Clean patron You can go to patreon.com slash engravenvids And if you're not a Team Keep It Clean patron, which is fine You can send your question at teamkeepitclean at gmail.com uh, We got a lot of great questions We already had some great questions We got even more great questions Let's go do it Let's go do it I don't know what kind of intro that was I don't know what I'd be saying So anyway uh, Next question came from my guy Makai He said Hello Engraven I can't wait for our receivers on our offense To prove this fan base wrong On why we don't need to go big On another weapon for Lamar Throughout this season Fans were screaming for Prochet and Wallace To get more touches And then a couple months later You guys want us to trade for DK And sign the wide receiver So um, Real quick Just to address that Yeah That would be me um, But the thing is With uh the reason that we wanted Prochet and Duvernay to get more touches was because that's what we had. That was our only options. And with Sammy Watkins, he was unreliable and unhealthy. Um, but with we had a Bateman, and early on he was unhealthy. We also had Hollywood. But we wanted the offense to try to be opened up as much as it possibly could with what we had. Those are the only options back then. Right now, one another receiver to add to the, to the mix because they got other options right now. It's not the middle of the season. It's not week eight or week nine to where, all right, this is what our roster is. Our roster is still being constructed. So that's why me personally would love to see them add another quality target for Lamar Jackson. But anyway, let's get back to the question. Uh, he said, um, and then a couple months later, you guys wanted us to trade for DK and, and sign a wide receiver, uh, which is going to significantly bur bury guys like Duvin Prochet on this roster. And then this team already has great weapons. We have a tight end who just had 1,400 yards this season. Uh, Bateman, who hasn't even played six games with Lamar yet, and we have Lamar's best friend and a receiver who just had a thousand yards. Those are three great weapons with a solid slot in Duve. It's obviously no disrespect to anyone who wants a wide receiver, but when Duve and Prochet play great this season, don't act too happy because not too long ago you guys wanted to replace them. Keep up the great work. No, people can be happy. If, like, no, nobody's rooting against Duvene and against Prochet. So many Ravens fans try to make these extremes. To where, oh, just because y'all want one thing, then y'all hate the other. No, it's not that. It's not that at all. It's that we just want a higher quality receiver. Duvin Prochet, slots. It's slot receivers. We want a high quality outside guy to add to what the Ravens have. And there's nothing wrong with that. that why wouldn't you want to make Lamar's job easier? You want his job to be easier, right? Like, give him somebody with a bigger catch radius. That's not James Prochet. That's not Devin DuVernay. Give him somebody with a bigger catch radius. Yeah, we got Hollywood. We got Bateman. We got Mandrews. What's wrong with adding to that? What's wrong with making this offense indefensible? Ain't nothing wrong with that. Like, make the job harder for opposing defenses to where they, if, if they take out Hollywood, even if they take out Mandrews, we still got somebody else. Oh, we got Bateman. Say, for instance, they got a nice corner on Bateman holding it down. They got somebody covering Hollywood. The man is off. Oh, we got somebody else for you. Oh, you can't hold everybody down. So it, it, we just want the job to be easier for Ravens and harder for whoever's going up against them. Next question. Speaking of receivers, came from my guy Matthew. He said, hey, Raven, good videos and nice work. You've matured in your craft with your transitions and break points. Appreciate it, Matt. Uh, he said, anyway, a lot of hype on the DK Metcalf trade, but I don't see it. Uh, not from a fit standpoint, but a real world standpoint. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't think it's going to happen either. But anyway, he said, if we trade for him, you have to pay him. And guess who else is due for a contract from the same draft class, Hollywood? Okay. Well, let the chips fall where they may. Pay everybody on offense. Pay him. Pay them their bread. Anyway, uh, he said, plus you have to pay Lamar. True. So how's that personal convo going to be when Lamar's best friend on the team is the odd man out on Lamar recruit and DK is also him lobbying for Hollywood's departure? And that's a sticky situation for the now and the payday. No, you, you find your way around it. You, you find your way around it if that were to happen. The, a lot of times I feel like um, uh, as Ravens fans, we worry about the Ravens money more than they do. And they, they have to find a way. They have to find a way. We got a, we got a $100 million uh, cornerback that they just paid. And we had, I forgot how much Marcus Peters made per year. They pay both of them. Both of them are pretty good at their position. Wouldn't you say? They pay both. They took care of both. Of them. And, and they had Tavon Young on an extension too. 
So they had three cornerbacks that were on extensions. Three of them. Now, I know wide receivers cost more than cornerbacks, but you can start shifting, shifting that money from the defense to the offense, and you can make it work. Next question came from Malik. He said, Dang, Raven, do you feel like the Ravens are wasting Lamar Jackson's potential? Uh, yes. Uh, I feel like they rely on his athleticism too much and not his arm. Anyway, uh, he said, I feel like Lamar Jackson is a generational talent. We failed to provide Lamar Jackson with the necessary uh, support to properly succeed, but Lamar has found a way to, to succeed. Anyway. I feel like another organization would have provided Lamar Jackson with way more support than the Ravens. Uh, just imagine Lamar Jackson with Sean McVay or Kyle Shanahan as a head coach. Yeah, and, and I think that's just simply because the Ravens, they, they're not used to this. They're not used to having somebody like this on offense. They're just not used to it, so I just feel like they just haven't known what to do uh, with Lamar Jackson. Um, They've been running this, this RPO-type offense and whatnot, and Lamar, he didn't even run that in college, man. He ran a spread offense in college. Ravens don't be running the spread nothing. So it's like they, they go against what worked. And it's just... Anyway. Um, number two, he said, Do you feel like the Ravens organization is heading in the wrong direction? We fail to attract free agents. We can't make in-game adjustments. And we have no leaders in the locker room. Now they got some leaders in the locker room. They got Calais Campbell. They got a Josh Bynes. They got a Lamar Jackson. So they got some leaders in the locker room. But anyway. Uh, he said, The Ravens organization as a whole has been slowing, slowly going downhill with the retirement of Ed Reed and Ray Lewis. Now, have you also noticed that we haven't drafted a Pro Bowler since the 2018 draft? Well, they drafted a, a Pro Bowler in the 2020 draft. Devin Duvernay. He made the Pro Bowl as a returner. Well, I know, yeah, yeah, as a returner. Or was he just all pro? No, I think he was in the Pro Bowl. Yeah, he was in the Pro Bowl. Uh, he said, we also failed to keep up with the times. The Ravens organization is so stuck in their old ways that we can't see that the league is leaving us behind. Now, that part I do agree with. Um, and I know so many Ravens fans, oh, no, Ravens, they need to play Ravens football. Uh, and I know a lot of Ravens fans, they also say, oh, man, a lot, so many of y'all want the Ravens to be the Chiefs or the Bengals or the Rams or the Bucks. Y'all want the Ravens to be all these other teams? No, we need to be the Ravens. The reason that um, so many Ravens fans compare or, or hope that the, the Ravens would take on just more that offensive approach like a lot of these other teams is because that's what's been working. Those teams have been in the playoffs. Those teams have been in Super Bowls more recently than the Ravens. And the thing is that they, um, they've been like they've been right there as far as assembling their team, assembling their squads right around the same time as the Ravens. With the Ravens getting Lamar, like those teams have been there too. Some of them even got their quarterbacks after the Ravens got Lamar, and they made it further than the Ravens have. And it's just like like Ravens just. Ravens, um, sometimes it seems like they're like stuck in this box to where they, they don't want to jump out the box and get with it. They just want to stay in that box. And it's like, it's, it's okay to do something different. Get out of that comfort, bo that comfort box. That comfort box is their, their comfort zone. Get out of it. Get out of it. It's okay. I know my guy, my guy Skeptical made such a great point uh, yesterday. Well, by the time you see this video, it's probably going to be for like three, four days ago. But anyway, he made such a great point. Well, he talked about how, like, teams, they, you got to be willing to take a chance on being great. Because if, you, if you're going to be good, oh, okay, cool, you'll be good. And Ravens are a good team, but they're not great. And teams that take the chance on being great, they make stuff happen. And the, the, the opportunity ain't going to work out every single time. But it's a matter of taking that chance so you will have that opportunity to make it work. And hope for the best. But Ravens, they... It, it just seems like they're content with being competitive. Uh, they got to do more, though. Next question came from the Marksman. He said, yo, what's up, Engraven? I just want to say love you, God bless your family, and keep up the good work. Appreciate that. My question is, do you think that Jawan James' contract should be restructured? No. Mm -mm. He's on the last year of it, and it's, no, no point. But anyway, we said, I was looking at it, and I found it to be pretty outrageous, especially for the position he has on the team as a depth offensive tackle. What do you think? Thanks, and once again, praying for you. Appreciate you, man. Um, no, I, no, because if they restructured it, then they would just they, they would have to add years to it. So you don't want to prolong his time with the team if it doesn't. Like, say, for instance, this year doesn't work out. You will have restructured his contract, and you still got to keep him around another year. No, just uh, leave it where it is, and if you end up re-signing him, hopefully, hey, hopefully he has a nice impact on the team. That'd be great. 
Worst case scenario is he doesn't, but then next year he's a free agent. Next question came from my guy, Matt. He said, with the upcoming draft, I totally agree with you that the Ravens need to add more offensive weapons, especially with the Ravens prioritizing defense and the O-line during free agency. However, though, I, how would you feel about the Ravens drafting one of the top tight ends in a draft in the second round instead of getting a wide receiver in the first? Considering how Greg Roman likes to run his offense, the success of our passing game between the hashes and a combination of age and health concerns for Nick Boyle, a uh, tight end could be a potentially bigger impact for this team than wide receiver. Ooh, um, one of the top tight ends uh, in the second round. No, nah, I'd rather I'd rather wide receiver. Um, I wouldn't mind a tight end in like the the third or fourth, but I, I'd rather receiver. Um, I see what you're saying though, as far especially with the offense and stuff. Uh, but yeah, I mean they are gonna need a tight end uh, because with Nick Boyle, you just you you don't know. You don't know. And with Mark, with Mark Andrews, uh, again, he's been healthy. So he's been, he's been pretty obviously very good. Uh, he's been great. Um, but, yeah, with Nick Boyle, you just you don't know what you're going to get from him and when you're going to get it. Um, so, yeah, I, I, they definitely need to add another tight end. Um, or is, if Josh Oliver going to be Josh Oliver gonna be like, hey, I'm here to the rescue. Uh, he said Trey McBride out of Colorado State or Greg uh, Dokic out of UCLA should both be available at the top of the second. Both add a lot of the same things us Ravens fans are clamoring for as far as a pass catcher in terms of athleticism, ball skills, and reliable hands, just not at the wide receiver position. We know the impact a top-tier top, tie, a top tier tight end can have. Oh, we certainly do. Uh, so why not invest more in a position we obviously know how to use better? Uh, thanks for listening. Hope you all are doing well. Best of luck from New England, and take care. Appreciate that. Um, I, I, don't, I don't see them doing I don't see them getting a tight end too early. I just don't. Um, I just I, I want them to spread it out more, man. To uh, spread their offense out more, um, really be able to use the whole field. That's on Roman. That's on Lamar too. Um, Lamar getting different guys involved, um, but I want his different guys to be top quality guys, and, and I want there to be more receivers out there than tight ends. Of course, Mark Andrews gonna be out there. Mark Andrews like a receiver and a tight end all at the same time. Um, but when they run and spread, I, I would just love it. To be those three high quality receivers, Bateman, Hollywood, and whoever else. Uh, and then Mark Andrews, and then in the backfield, you got JK or Gus. Um, or Duvernay in the backfield too. Never know. But yeah, man, I, I would just I would I would love that. And as for yeah, as far as another tight end, yeah, I'm sure they'll get one. Um that early though. Mm, I, don't, I don't think so Next question came from my guy Greg from B-More He said, I ain't Raven to start this Thanks for the reminder in the previous video That the WWE NXT star Braun Breaker Used to be a Ravens fullback in training camp in 2020 Sucks the preseason was taken away from players Trying to make a team that year I remember when they signed him But I 100% forgot uh, Even though I'm a wrestling fan And I watched him for a while Now I'm rooting for him even more Oh yeah, shout out to him Braun Rick Steiner, oh yeah Never forget when the Ravens signed him um, And he said, uh Anyway, my question is, the NFL draft is soon. I know they say best player available, but what position has the most need for the Ravens to target in the draft and any players you got an eye on like Bateman last year? Solid pass rusher can make an impact as a rookie to grow with away or offensive tackle who can be a solid behind Ronnie Stanley if Stanley can't go or gets hurt again. Uh, in this draft, I would love for them to draft. Much love and positivity to everyone in this community and go Ravens. Mm. So what position has the most need for the Ravens to target? Um, probably cornerback cornerback um offensive line but i think cornerback more than anything because they after their two top guys who both coming back from injury nothing nothing so i, I definitely say corner Next question came from my guy deshaun he said instead of signing melvin gordon why not just bring back Devonte freeman um, it's possible that they that whole Melvin Gordon report could have came from Melvin Gordon's side, but it could have came from the Ravens side too to try to maybe bring down Devontae's price a little bit. I don't know, but um we'll find out soon enough uh what the whole report was about and what it was trying to get the Ravens to do or what it was trying to get Melvin Gordon. We'll find that out soon when the Ravens make whatever their next move is at running back. Next question came from Phil. He said, I just got a notification about the Panthers talking to other teams about moving back. Uh, I believe if there's any way for the Ravens to show they are looking to win now is by trading with the Panthers on draft night. We get the sixth pick and their sixth rounder and they get our 14th pick, third, uh, third rounder and our fifth rounder. With this sixth pick, we get KT, Kayvon Thibodeau. And with our second rounder, we trade up a few spots and get George Pickens. 
Passing up the Colts and Bears just in case we'd have our edge wide receiver core for the future. This also gives us impact guys that wouldn't that we wouldn't have to pay big money to for a while and would only continue to have uh, success working out Lamar's contract. This could answer questions with up to how much we pay Lamar, seeing the amount of help he would be getting as well. From there, we could use a couple of additions at offensive line, defensive line, and cornerback. But our answer with pass rush and playmakers on offense besides Lamar will be settled. What are your thoughts? I wouldn't be mad at this at all. I really wouldn't. Impact guys, attitude guys. Um, yeah, so you nailed it. Next question came from Ma. He said, hope everything is going great, man. I've sent in a lot of questions lately, and I appreciate the respectful dialogue you have engaged them with. Hey, no, no problem. Uh, I'll keep this short. Due to your recent video about feeling like a defective Ravens fan, what move would you prefer? Out of A, trading a first, third, and Devin DuVernay to the Seahawks for DK Metcalf or to the 49ers for Debo Samuel. Nope, no Debo Samuel. Uh, if you choose one, the other ceases to be available, uh, then paying them as a top five wide receiver to keep them around. So, um, okay, let's see the other option. Or B, keeping our picks, signing Odell Beckham Jr., drafting Pickens in the second round, and using the remaining draft picks on defense. No offensive line, no running backs, just defense. Oh, oh. I have the options listed like this because I truly believe that if the Ravens do go out and bring in a big wide receiver, they won't bring in any offensive talent besides that said wide receiver. If they don't make a big trade, I see them taking a swing at drafting another wide receiver and taking a shot at one of the remaining free agents. Mm. I would go. I would go B. I mean, I wouldn't be mad at A. A first and third and Doof for DK Metcalf. I wouldn't be mad at A, but I wouldn't be mad at B either because with B, um, he said sign Odell Beckham Jr. So he'd be he possibly he call come on later, but you would have that quality option there too. Um, then drafting Pickens, I, I would love if they got him because just that nastiness that he would bring. Um, so you'd have Bateman, Hollywood, Pickens, and then later Bateman, Hollywood, Pickens, Odell Beckham Jr. Market. Oh yeah. And then uh, using the remaining draft picks on defense. No offensive line. Ooh, ooh. But there's still free agency, though. So you can still get some guys in free agency. But no running backs. Okay. Just defense. So linebackers, corners, edge, all in the other rounds. Mm. Yeah. I, I mean, either option worked for me. But with B, it gives me more. And y'all know I'm greedy, so I'm going to go with B. And the last question on this episode came from my guy, Manuel. He said, what's up, Engraven? Shout out from Mexico. Your EDC now. Our record is 6-2 and two with an early close loss to the Bengals in Buffalo in Week 7. Uh, all our victories have come from Lamar being comeback and our defense uh, being let loose, as promised. Our next opponent is Russell Wilson before the bye and after we go to Tampa. Uh, our defense has lost binds due to injury, and Malik Harrison is not there yet. Furthermore, Ben Powers is injured, and Stanley is just returning to play for the first time. But G. Rowe has not used our wide receivers as he should. And Mandrews, Hollywood, Bateman, uh, come to life when Lamar has to bring us back like in the Colts game. What is your next move considering that the trade is out and, uh, and there's still undrafted talent at O-line and your favorite wide receiver, Traylon Burks? Uh, what do you do with coaching or you won't touch it at all? Stay safe and take care of yourself and your loved ones. P.S. The Revenge Tour will be lit. All right. So, um... We're six and two, and we just all the def all the victories have come from Lamar having a comeback. Um, if that's the case, does he have to come back? Um, does he have to come back from just like like a game winning drive? Um, if so, we having a call, we having a talk with Mike McDonald, or does he have to come back? Uh, like it was last year, where the offense would just start slow and slow and slow and slow and slow and slow and slow. Then all of a sudden, oh, in the fourth quarter, you're like, oh, hey, wait a minute. We got a game to play. That's the case. We got to have a talk with Greg Roman. So it, it would all just depend on how this stuff is happening. He said, but Giro has not used our wide receivers as he should. Uh, Mandrews, Hollywood, and Bateman come to life on the minds to bring us back. So with that part, um, then I, that, that'd that be a conversation that I would have to have with, uh, with Gregory. I say, excuse me, Gregory. Um, you either pick it up or pack it out. Straight up. I know we're winning, but I, for me, I would not let winning cloud everything. 
Because a lot of times winning can cloud your judgment. Because you can be like, hey, we're winning, so we're straight, right? Right? But no. Uh, it, it's all about the quality of wins, too. So, yeah. Look like me and Gregory, would have to have a little talk in the office. And the last, last question came from my guy, Slim. He said, what's up, Engraven? Hope all is well with you and the fam, man. Been a little minute, but I have a question. I noticed the Ravens have been silent with Miles Boykin. They haven't spoken much about him, but they haven't released him either. It comes off, though, like he's the Tyson Williams of the receiving core. What do you see them doing with Boykin this season? Uh, keeping him, trading him, or letting him find his own way um y'all already know how i feel about miles boykin I, I just feel like it was uh it was a relationship that didn't work out um to where he wasn't put in the best position to succeed i know a lot of fans like oh man miles boykin he would run the wrong route and miles boykin he did this and that but miles boykin didn't get no volume he didn't get no targets his way he he was there and yeah he was regarded as the best block and receiver on the team but that was it. So they no jump balls, no fade, no none none of that stuff. So he he caught a couple catches here and there, but it just he he wasn't used at all. So I thought that they their relationship, him and the Ravens relationship, was gonna come to an end last season. I really did, especially when um I think he had like a hamstring injury. Well, like every receiver had a hamstring injury, but I, I thought their relationship was gonna come to an end last year. Uh, but I, I think the same this year. Whether it's trade or release, I, I don't think he's going to be with the team uh, moving forward. Um, yeah, and yeah, we haven't heard anything about a possible trade or possible anything like that. Um, but I just, it, he he hasn't gotten an opportunity uh, with the Ravens by now. Then it's, it's just not going to happen. And, and I think we all know that. Um, so hopefully wherever he does end up Whenever he does end up somewhere else um, Hopefully he can get a real shot And they can really use his skill set They can maximize his skill set uh, And they can use him the way that he's supposed to be used